An Android-powered console breaks crowdfunding records. Tomb Raider continues to raise eyebrows with its choice of writers. Celebrities jump all over video games in music and movies. A trio of mobile games buzz in. We get a glimpse of the first game to use Unreal Engine 4. The Walking Dead gets another video game adaptation. Canadian jobs are slashed at Rockstar. And Epic Mickey is back with a shiny new cinematic. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen. This week's big surprise came from Kickstarter, where an Android-based gaming console named Ouya enjoyed the biggest launch day in the crowdfunding site's history. Not only did the project quickly reach its funding target, but less than 24 hours after launch, it had doubled its goal. A few days later, and gamers have pledged more than $4.3 million to the project, a tiny box full of power running NVIDIA's Tegra 3 system and playing a whole bunch of great games directly on your TV. It's been designed by the brains behind One Laptop Per Child and Jambox, with staff members from Xbox, Kindle and IGN's digital distribution arm. Ouya is being designed for developers by developers, meaning that virtually as soon as you take the kit out of the box, you can make your own games. Predictably, as the novelty wears off of the project, naysayers are starting to come out of the woods. The most common observation, now that the project is fully funded, rather than pledging more, you should wait for the gadget to be released and then buy a second or third edition once the bugs are worked out. Since E3, Crystal Dynamics has been bugged by accusations of misogynistic writing, of inherent sexism and of inappropriate content in the upcoming Tomb Raider reboot, scheduled for March 2013. At San Diego Comic-Con this week, however, the studio got the last laugh, unveiling just who has taken on writing duties for Lara Croft's comeback. And it's Rihanna Pratchett, award-winning writer for Overlord, Mirror's Edge and Heavenly Sword. She's been working on the game for the past two years, with studio head Daryl Gallagher observing that she brings a unique perspective to the game and to the character of Lara Croft. Another surprising reveal this week, Trent Reznor, frontman for Nine Inch Nails and composer of the award-winning soundtrack for The Social Network, has returned to his gaming roots, putting some notes down for the theme tune for Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Reznor famously contributed to the soundtrack for Quake, but in recent years he's, contributed, he's concentrated primarily on cinematic experiences. When the opportunity came up for him to work with Treyarch, however, he jumped at it. Reznor is secretly a huge Call of Duty fan. And he's not the only big name to be attached to video game soundtracks this week, with Sir Paul McCartney announcing that he is writing music with Bungie, the studio that made Halo. The former Beatle posted a photograph from inside the Bungie studios, explaining he was really excited about the opportunity. No announcements have been made regarding just what the music is being composed for, but wishful thinking online suggests it could be a new title in the developer's long-dormant Marathon franchise. Michael Fassbender has also been tied to gaming with the Prometheus star signing on to produce, and star in, a film based on Assassin's Creed. While the storyline is not yet finalised, Fassbender has already announced he will not be playing in-game character Desmond, instead taking on the role of a bartender who discovers he is a descendant of famous assassins. Popping back to Halo quickly, Comic-Con also saw the announcement of a new live-action miniseries. Forward Unto Dawn stars familiar faces from Narnia and X-Men, as well as new Hollywood talent, and the five-episode series will provide backstory and special insights into the story of Halo 4 due to launch in November this year. Set 27 years before the events of the game, we are taken back to the beginning of the war between the humans and the Covenant. Forward Unto Dawn will kick off on October 5th, but if you miss it online, a special 90-minute extended cut featuring additional footage and bonus content will be included in the limited edition of Halo 4. To mobile gaming now, and while everybody expected Activision's new Leeds studio to work on a handheld version of Call of Duty, the reality is something much more retro and much more awesome. Martin Brown's team has officially announced that it is working on a revamped version of 1982 classic Pitfall. 1984 classic Spy v Spy is also coming to smartphones thanks to the efforts of robots and pencils. Not only are we promised a plethora of traps, weapons, loots and mischief, but the game also features the ability to switch between modern and retro modes at the touch of a button. All good things really do come in threes, and while it's a little less old school, Tapulous and Disney Mobile have confirmed that they are back and ready to reclaim the iPhone rhythm gaming crown with the release of Tap Tap Revenge Tour. 
It stripped back 80% of the features of the previous games, resulting in a clean, streamlined affair packed with a bunch of free tracks and a whole library of premium content, including Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe. Tap Tap Revenge Tour is out now in the App Store and it is completely free. Epic Games has also made a major announcement revealing the first game that will use the new Unreal Engine 4. No, it's not Gears of War, instead it's the cartoon based Fortnite which has laid very low since it was revealed last December. We've finally been given a new glimpse into just what's in store, a daylight period used for exploration and foraging as well as building your fortress, and you'd better make the hours count because when night falls the forces of darkness are coming to get you. Despite looking very different to what we now expect from the studio, Fortnite is shaping up to be something pretty epic indeed, right down to its PC only release. Keep an eye out for this one, it's due to arrive sometime in 2013. To business and Rockstar Games is in the process of closing its Vancouver based studios as it concentrates operations on the new custom built Rockstar Toronto factory in Ontario. To soften the blow, Rockstar is offering all current Vancouver employees the opportunity to join Rockstar Toronto, or if that doesn't appeal, there is the option to join up with another Rockstar studio around the world. Rockstar Vancouver recently finished work on Max Payne 3 and had previously contributed to Bully. Changing track completely, Activision has decided that there just aren't enough games based on The Walking Dead, so it's announced a new one. This time it's an FPS based on the popular TV series rather than the comic books. You play as Daryl Dixon, complete with a crossbow, and you undertake a haunting, unforgiving quest on your way to Atlanta. We're promised a deep, engrossing story, intense action, and some pretty scary walkers. All the emphasis is on survival, and the winner at the end may not be the best with a firearm, but rather the gamer with the most analytical mind. The Walking Dead video game is due out on Xbox 360, PS3, and PC sometime in 2013. And finally this week we have a quick look at Disney Epic Mickey 2. This one heads back to Wasteland where we left Oswald the Lucky Rabbit at the end of the original game. Now because the last game only came out on Wii and this shiny new sequel is headed to Xbox 360 and PS3 as well, the fellas at Junction Point have put together a little bit of a recap to show you what's going on in the game's opening cinematic. Not long ago, a rather brave but mischievous mouse discovered a world I had created for forgotten tombs. The mouse faced many challenges and choices, but in the end he saved Wasteland from total destruction with the help of a new friend, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. With Oswald by his side, good triumphed over evil and our family was reunited. We had a chance to play a little bit of Epic Mickey 2 while at E3 and the new gameplay really is something a little bit special. And mind you, that's before you consider the fact it's the first time we've heard Oswald talk, it's the first time he's been able to play alongside Mickey as a true partner, and the first time he and many other characters have appeared in HD. Disney Epic Mickey 2 is due out this year in November. For the full version of those trailers or for more information on any of these stories, head to playerattack.com. I'm Jessica Citizen, we'll see you next week.